Um, uh, you make this case uh, how the CIA leveraged and the Bush administration um, used this guy curveballs, um, false allegations to provide a pretext for war. Explain who he was and how the administration sure. used him. Yeah, I think this is sort of the defining case of how we got led down the rabbit hole in Iraq. Curveball was uh, is the code name of an Iraqi, uh, Rafiq Awan uh, is his name, who was a, chemi a chemical engineer who defected to uh, Germany, fled to Germany in 1999, and told the German intelligence authorities that Saddam that he had helped mastermind a scheme to build biological weapons for Saddam Hussein. That information was never confirmed. It was never vetted. It was just sort of uh, put out there uh, and handed over to the Americans. And after 9/11. And the CIA literally just pulled it out of a safe, and within three weeks, the classified documents showed that all of the the caveats that had existed before that period, where it, the the questions of Saddam's WMD was viewed as possible, probable, could be, maybe, someday, suddenly were viewed in a totally different light. And his information, that is, the information from this one individual, uh, rose higher and higher until. Uh, the fall of 2002, when uh, President Bush is citing it, it appears in a uh, document known as a National Intelligence Estimate, which is the uh, the gold standard of, of U.S. Uh, intelligence. Uh, it, it's, it forms the the strongest part of that. Uh, the president cites his information in the uh, State of the Union speech in 2003. Uh, Colin Powell, uh, the Secretary of State, makes it the absolute highlight of his speech when he goes up to the U.N. Security Council in February uh, before the war. Uh, he shows pictures or drawings of trucks. What they don't say at that point is that U.S. authorities had never interviewed this man had never confirmed his information, had never vetted his background, didn't even know his name before the war. They had ignored warnings from the German intelligence authorities, who repeatedly had sent warnings over, saying he was a single source. They couldn't confirm his information. He was had had a nervous breakdown. They didn't know what to make of him. He might be a fabricator. There had been a bitter fight inside of the CIA. Uh, between the clandestine service, that is, the, the uh, operatives who, who go out and steal secrets, but who deal with informants and defectors like this, and the analysts. The analysts were utterly championing, championing the champ, sorry, they were, <laughs> they were pushing his story. And, um, uh, and, and three days after Powell went to the United Nations, the U.N. weapons inspectors went to all of the sites, every single one of the sites that Curveball had told them about where these weapons supposedly were being produced. And they not only didn't find the evidence, they proved that it couldn't be true. They found a variety of things that showed his story was wrong. All of that was ignored, was overruled, was pushed aside, and obviously we went to war on false pretenses. Um, so I find his story, uh, and, and those people who tried to bring that truth to power, who tried to stop this uh, train wreck from happening, uh, were, were not only pushed aside. Uh, one guy uh, I, I write about is uh, came back uh, and, you know, discovered that his desk, uh, you know, had been boxed up, and he, this was at CIA, and he was being sent off to the visitor center, and then someone else, you know, put at the end of a hallway filled with construction material and no access to uh, classified computers. Uh, the CIA was very, very vindictive. So I, I found this case fascinating as I tried to sort of drill down and peel back the layers of what had happened here, Th this idea of, of, of these bureaucracies made up of people who are trained to lie, cheat and steal, that at every possible juncture there was rival bureaucratic rivalries and, um, and, and really tawdry ambitions get in the way, and frankly, spineless leadership that just absolutely refused to, uh, to stand up. What you had in the end, this man was a con man. He was trying to get a, a visa to Germany to get political asylum, but the CIA heard what it wanted to hear. It conned itself. It, it saw what it wanted to see, and it gave the White House totally what it wanted. And Cheney's to, role to in hear. this? Dick Cheney's role is not as, as large. I mean, uh, to me, you know, the, the idea there's uh, th there were two things happening, as you know, before the war. There was the WMD question, and then there was the role of, of the question of Saddam's alleged support for terrorism. And on the WMD side, the CIA was not whispering this, you know, to Dick Cheney or something. It was coming in through the front door. George Tenet and uh, the rest of the CIA was, you know, was briefing the president, was briefing the vice president, was briefing senior members of Congress. They were putting out these uh, reports, all of which, you know, proved 
proved to be totally wrong. So to me, the great, to, in my view, the greater scandal is not that there were three or four guys over at the Pentagon sort of whispering in the vice president's ear and, and, and uh, you know, f feeding him false information about uh, one thing or another. It's that the entire intelligence community got this so devastatingly wrong. When you go back and you look at Colin Powell's speech, we're coming up to the fifth anniversary of it next month, and you go back and you, and you read it now, and it's entirely based on, on this document that the CIA put out uh, a couple of months earlier, this, this national intelligence estimate. It's wrong in almost every single level, and that's based on what the CIA gave him. So, I, you know, it's, I don't think, it, to me, it's not the issue of a couple of guys. It's that this system was so utterly corrupt. I want to put this question to you and then to Chuck Lewis, and that's the issue of the media. Um, many people would have believed President Bush if he had simply said it, but not that many. If it, uh, it took the media repeating this over and over again. And the, even to this day, um, the concern about saying the word lie. Do you think the president lied? I mean, this study says more than 900 times this false allegation was repeated, the, quote, false statements. What do you think, Bob Drogan? Well, I think on the issue of Saddam's alleged ties to 9-11, or the claims that Saddam was tied to 9-11 and al-Qaeda, they clearly ignored warnings from the CIA and others that that evidence was sketchy at best. So there was a deliberate attempt or a political decision made that they were going to make that case. Now, if you want to, you know, however you want to describe that is whatever. They, they made that their political decision. On the WMD side, it's a lot harder to find, I think, you know, uh, uh, a difference between what they were saying and what the CIA was telling them. I, this issue of lying, I have to say, Amy, it, 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 I've never quite understood it. I mean, it's sort of like asking to me whether they, you know, forgot to put their turn signal on before they drove off a bridge. I mean, we're the, they took us into the midst of a, you know, a terrible, uh, a horrific, tragic war, and, and they did it on the basis of, of ponied up false intelligence and, and sort of where they pushed, pushed the evidence here or there is sort of, to me, is sort of secondary. The, the fact is they got it absolutely wrong on every single quarter. And Chuck Lewis, finally, we only have about 30 seconds, but if you could respond to that issue, uh, the media's role in this, amplifying the charges. Well, I mean, the, the, you know, the media, uh, particularly in Washington, listens to officialdom. And if all these officials are all saying these things uh, across the board, and we only looked at eight, just imagine it was 25 to 50 on Capitol Hill and throughout the administration. Uh, that goes into millions and millions and millions of words uh, in the airwaves, on the web, uh, in newspapers. And so it was very hard, to, as I call it, an impenetrable din to break through that. Um, but the other thing, the intelligence is really interesting. It was mixed. Uh, there, at every level, there were people saying, don't do this. And at every level, the politicization of the intelligence community, they would put it in, as Bob is saying. And these folks were making speeches, uh, the president and the vice president, before they Five had a national intelligence estimate. So anyway, there, this story is going to keep rolling out. It's incredibly interesting. It's horrendous as well. Chuck course. Lewis, thanks very much for joining us, founder of Center for Public Integrity. We will link to the study and Bob Drogan author of Curveball. That does it for the show. Our website's democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.